wrap up of red and white books because that's apparently all I read this month, so there you go. I have to use a hair dryer. <laughs> Why are you in my room doing this? Because it doesn't move, you know. Because it's in the bathroom. You can't move it. Jay didn't understand that the hair dryer. I never said it didn't can move. move from one room to another. I never said that. She's in our bathroom and she's, she goes, I'm in here to use the hair dryer. The hair dryer. No, because Daddy wanted to shower and I was like, I'm using the hair dryer. I'm using the hair dryer. You could have got it naked. It's not my fault. <laughs> I don't care. You're the one who cares. Okay, bye. Bye, oh, enjoy yourself. Bye. I have to reset up the camera. Ugh, you make my life so difficult. Jay, and today I'm here with my July wrap up. I did not read that much compared to last month where I read 28 books. I read five books this month, but you know, I was busy with full time work starting. Five is still pretty good. So, without further ado, let us get started. The first book I completed this month was The Shadow Queen by CJ Redwin, and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It follows Lorelai, who is seeking revenge on her stepmother, Queen Irene, who ended up killing her father to take over the throne of Ravenspire. With the help of her little brother Leo, Lorelai must use her magic in order to take over the throne once again. Prince Cole's parents are killed in a neighboring village by ogres. He is named the new King of Elder. In order to rid his land of these ogres, he has to turn to magic, which only Queen Irene can provide. They end up making a deal, Queen Irene's magic, in exchange for Princess Lorelai's heart. But upon meeting, Lorelai and Cole fall in love and they need to work together in order to overthrow Queen Irene. I was originally super intrigued by this book because your girl is super into fairy tale retellings and this is like the Snow White and the Evil Queen retelling. And I was like, bro, this is gonna be so good, but it fell a little short for me. I did still really enjoy it and I was super excited that there are dragons in this book because I had no idea and I recently read The Last Name of Sarah, which is big on dragons as well, so I was very excited about it. But I thought that the insta-love between Cole and Lorelai was ridiculous. It just pissed me off. The plot was interesting, but it became very repetitive very quickly and it was kind of slow getting into the action, so that was kind of a downfall for me. I really liked Cole as a character. Lorelai pissed me off. She was just really annoying to me. My favorite character by far was Leo, and I'm still bitter about what happened with Leo. We're moving on. It's fine. Another thing that really pissed me off with this book was the amount of times I had to read about how Lorelai smelled. Like, great, she smells good. We understand. Don't tell me 50 million times. But as I said, 3.5 stars, nothing amazing, but not a bad book either, so I would recommend it if you are into fairy tale retellings, because it was still fun to read. The next book that I completed is Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bones trilogy, so I'm not going to give a synopsis because, you know, we don't want to spoil the first book, but I loved this book. I don't know why I took so long to pick it up because I read the first book like three years ago and then I'm just picking this up now. But I ended up giving it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. I loved how it was more focused on the war between the Seraphim and the Chimera instead of the romance between Karu and Akiva, even though I really want them to get along again. Zuzana, still my favorite character, love her so much. She's so sassy and witty and her relationship with Mick is literally the purest thing ever and I cannot wait to read more in the third book which I'm reading right now and I'm only like 250 pages in but we're getting there it's a big book it's like 600 pages besides the point I love this book I love the series so far and you guys should all pick it up because it's so good the next book that I picked up this month was The Last Star by Rick Yancey and I ended up giving this a 3.5 out of 5 stars I know a lot of people don't like this book in series they say that the fifth wave was like the only book that needed to be there and then it just goes downhill for them but personally I actually liked this story I thought it was really good I listened to it on audiobooks I don't know if that would make a difference being able to like hear the voice actors with the story and maybe that made it better to me I don't know but personally I thought it was pretty good I was entertained I will say that it was a little bit slow at times which is why I'm not giving it a higher rating and I also didn't really like the ending of the book I'm still a bit confused if there was aliens or not 
I also still really did not like Cassie and Evan together. They really annoyed me. And I didn't like who Ringer ended up with, even though I love her so much. Her character is amazing. I think she's great. I know a lot of people don't like her, but I think that she should have ended up as being independent, like the bad bitch she is, but that's just my take on things. But as I said, I thought it was good. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I enjoyed it. The next book that I picked up this month is The Boneless Mercies by April Genevieve Tuchulk probably saying that wrong. The book follows Frey, Ovi, Juniper, and Runa who are boneless mercies who are hired in order to kill those who are suffering from disease and illness. These four female warriors decide to quit the death trade in order to hunt and kill the Blue V monster who is a beast who has been terrorizing Jarl Roth's village for several months. And if they are successful, they will get all the fame and glory that they've been seeking all their lives. Although the story was very slow to progress, it took a very long time for anything to really happen. The battle scenes definitely made up for the lack of action at the beginning. The first half of the story really dragged on for me. It was very boring in my opinion, but then once the battle scenes happened, I was really into it. I really liked how the story revolved around these four women, and they were just total badass warriors, which I loved so much. It was great to see them kick some ass, and also they supported each other so much with everything which was super nice to see. I also really liked how it showed a platonic relationship between females and males and also females and females and how it didn't have to be romance. It was really nice to see that, you know, people can be friends without underlying emotions. I also really liked reading about the different people in this story and their backgrounds and how everybody lived differently and what magic systems they used. Like there was the Boneless Mercies but then there was also Sea Witches and the Quicks which were like kind of like Robin Hood people in the story. It was really cool. The book is being released in October so if you guys are interested in it then definitely check it out in October because it is a pretty cool story. It's a gender flipped retelling of Beowulf so it was kind of cool to read. If you guys have read Beowulf I suggest it because it was kind of cool to see the parallels and all that. And then the final book I uh, picked up I really really did not like. Um, it's A Sister's Secret by Sydney Rox and I was actually super excited about this book because it sounds really cool but it was not really cool. I ended up giving it a 1.5 out of 5 stars. It follows this group of five sisters who come together every month after the death of their mother and have to complete these challenges that one of the sisters sets forth for them. One of the challenges ends up being that they have to be truthful with each other and a sister reveals something that kind of shakes the water a little bit and I thought that maybe, you know, it could have been something really cool but it was really predictable. I was able to call exactly what was the secret within like 10 pages of the book which was really annoying. Also, all the characters are African American and they all spoke like really ghetto and it just really bothered me the way the author portrayed these characters like she made them just your typical black character and it was just way too much for me I did not like it and the dialogue between all the sisters and the people that they were talking to was just really cringe and I just it was not for me so I definitely think that it had potential but it was not executed well, so I really don't like it. I really don't recommend it, but I mean, if it sounds like something you'd be into, then go for it. But like, d don't say that I recommended it, because I do not. Alright guys, so that was my July wrap-up for this year. Let me know down below if you guys have read any of these, what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye! <laughs>